So today's psalm is one of those very familiar, iconic, oft-quoted psalms that has such a great truth to it, a reminder to you and me not only to be faithful and diligent in our responsibilities and the task we have in our life, but to make sure that we have those uh, tasks and responsibilities and opportunities in the proper perspective. So this is a psalm that challenges us, not with don't do anything and let God do it all, but rather as you're fulfilling your responsibility, know that if God wasn't doing it through you, for you, with you, that you would fail utterly. That anything of eternal consequence, anything that has to be uh, accomplished or achieved for the Lord must be done through him. And if you think you can do something in opposition to him and succeed, you would be foolish. Listen to what he writes in Psalm 127, verses 1 and 2. Unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain who build it, implying that the foundation won't be secure. Or because the Lord builds it, he knows where to build it, how to build it, what's coming at it. And if you don't have the Lord doing that for you, your home, that's a metaphor, will be built on sand. And the storm will come. Even if you build it, it'll be built in vain. Unless the Lord guards the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. Now notice he doesn't tell people not to build their homes or tell watchmen not to watch, but to build and to watch knowing that the Lord is the one who is doing it, that your dependence is on him, your allegiance is to him, your um, obedience is to him, and you're utilizing his principles and his protocols. So the watchman can watch the city, but unless the Lord is really the one doing it, you're wasting your time. It is vain, he says, for you to rise up early, sit up late, and that's either to build or to watch, to eat the bread of sorrows, to be full of anxiety over your effort and your work, and you wonder if it's going to succeed, or wonder if you're going to fail. For he so gives his beloved sleep. The absence of anxiety is directly connected to how much we trust the Lord with the affairs of our life. We do the best we can do. We put forth our greatest effort. We reason things out and we research and we study and we receive counsel. But in the end of all of our endeavors, the Lord must accomplish it. Or else we might achieve this thing that we're trying to do, but it will just dissolve because it will not be sustained by the permanence of God's will. So you and I, as we watch the city, as we rise up to build, as we wake in the morning, as we go to sleep at night, as we eat our food, as we stress over our anxiety, know that the Lord is the one who gives us sleep. Why is that? Because he's the one who builds our house. He's the one who watches our city. You and I are safe in him. We are kept in the hand of Jesus Christ, whose hand is in the Lord, and he will not lose any of us. No matter what might happen, no matter what comes our way, we are eternally safe. And in that, we can sleep as his beloved. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you do build our homes and watch our cities. In terms of the pattern of our lives and the paths of our lives and the duration of our lives, you watch over all of it. And if you didn't, we would have no hope. Not only did you choose us before the foundation of the world was laid, you sought us, you saved us, you filled us, you sealed us, you empower us, you walk with us, and you bless our path, and you protect us, and our, our souls are eternally safe with you. May we rejoice in that today, so tonight when we go to bed, we can lay our heads on our pillows and go soundly to sleep, knowing they have no, no reason to worry, because you've built the city, and you watch it. And Lord, we ask that in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Have a great day today, and hope to see you tomorrow on Saturday.